go together. The 2008 ABSA off-road season started with a customary pipe opener, the Nissan Dealer 400 in the quaint little town Darling in the Western Cape in February, and certainly spelt out a season that was going to be a humdinger. The production vehicle category, bigger and better than last season, looks set for an explosive start, with a premier SP class featuring more than 15 vehicles from four manufacturers lining up. Reigning champions Nissan were again preparing to slog it out with the works Fords and Toyotas. But the big three were also joined by a lone entry from Land Rover. Seven-time champions Nissan was spearheaded by reigning drivers champions Duncan Foss and Ralph Pitchford in a factory Sassel Nissan Navara. In the second, four-time champion Hannes Grobler even had a new man in the jump seat, Juan Moore. The old firm was back to the factory Ford challenge, was spearheaded by former champions Neil Woolridge and Kenny Schalthammer, joined by Mark Ferguson and Craig West. They would in turn be supported by Kubis van Tonde and Rian Gropper in the Unifreight Ford Ranger. While motorsport legend Alfie Cox was back in a bucky, kitted out in the impressive silver and black livery of the motorite SB crew and trusty nav Henny Tostircher at his side. Toyota lined up six SB class cars with two new Castrol Toyota Hilux V6 works cars in the capable hands of Mark Renier and Chris Birkin, and Bevan Berthold with Robin Houghton in the second. Chris Fisser partnered Yabi Badenost and Hicho and Yap de Brain were together again in the Mikarin XL dealer team Hilux. Yaku Swanepoel and Keith Solomon and Roacons as George and Sharon Barkhuizen made a quantum leap from Class E to the very competitive SP class. Swanepoel and Solomon will campaign under the IDM cement banner. Staying with the production car class, the categories D for six-cylinder cars and E also had a decidedly edgy and competitive look to it. The future foretold of a Class D battle which was to be another shootout between Toyota and Nissan. Reigning drivers champ Cliff Weichelt with a new co-driver Jimmy Gock were out in the N1 4x4 Toyota Hilux. Nissan sentiments were with Kutsia Labas Kachny and Johan Kharaba in the race on its Nissan hardbody and the trustworthy Ryobi Nissan driven by brothers Henry and Maurice Zamatin. The other Toyota challenge was to be supplied by Dalmas Pei Ramon beside note and Stefan Lock, who were without doubt the rookies of the year in 07. Class E2 was due to supply some surprises and plenty of thrills a minute. In the first race of the season, it was all systems go in Darling. Nissan won no less than seven out of eight production car races in 2007, and the other manufacturers were all ready to topple them from their lofty perch. With that performance, it was inevitable that they would clinch the manufacturer's trophy, another accolade that Toyota and Ford would want to wrest from their grip in 08. Foss was off fan into his stride very quickly, clearly with intent, as he set off to defend his hard-won national championship crown, but for the first 100 Ks, he chased Krobler. At the end of the first two tough and dusty 166-kilometer loops that made up the route, it was a Nissan 1-2. Foss led Krobler by a scant 33 seconds, while Cronier was third, three minutes and 14 seconds back, but he and co-driver Birkin had their Developed side shaft problems and were forced to replace it at the designated service point. Ivar Tollefson and Quinn Evans were hustling the third Nissan along at a rate of knots. While Woolridge and Schalthammer also had plans of their own, cut in on the action at the front between Nissan and Toyota. The Ford duo started off like the clappers and were just a few seconds off the pace early on. They weren't exactly holding back. Ditto for Fissa and Bardnost in the second theater in the top six, but the dust and the heat continued to make it tougher as the day wore on. Cox, back in the comfort of an enclosed cockpit after doing duty in a special vehicle the year before, was reveling in it, but the motorite SP was just a little slow. And then things went horribly wrong. Defending special vehicle champion Evan Hutchison and Akin Bergman rolled their bat at speed and were hit by Naim Mosaji and Rayon Bodhanya, which instantly set the motorite special alight. Woolridge and Schalthammer were on the scene first. Luckily, Hutchinson reacted quickly when Bergman lost consciousness and pulled him to safety. That's one million rand's worth of car burnt to cinders and our race camera too, mind you. At the front, though, blissfully unaware of all that going on behind him, Foss was on the way to making the perfect defense of his title. Clocking the fastest first loop gave him a healthy lead over his stablemate Krobler, who had not given up the chase yet. While Cronier and Birkin themselves were throwing caution to the wind and let her rip in taxing conditions. Left 
the DSP late after that repair, but there was to be more heartbreak as they finished fifth, but were later excluded for deviating from the race route. The Zedenote and Lock were trying to pick up where they left off in 07. D leaders Kutsiela Baskachny and Johan Gerber piloting the race on Nissan to a very healthy ninth place. In Class E, Yanni Fusser and Jox Leroux and their team Barbersman Toyota impressed with their early season form and led Class E by four minutes. The Barbers Fine lads were just ahead of Thomas Rundle and Brian Roberts in the Bowden Tire Services Nissan hard body. They were pushing hard to keep it that way. The 2,7 litre engine battle was tight. Harold and Tian Kun brought up the rear of the SB class as they quietly worked their way into seventh. The last surviving car in class with the Land Rover doing its name proud. And in the Ryobi Nissan, the brothers and Matten were on their own mission to steal the red class D car to a first finish for the year. Unfortunately, they fell short of that target this time. But the second car in class D, the defending champion, the N1 4x4 with Cliff Weichheld at the steering, did get there in one piece, finishing at 6 hours and 35 minutes, only to be excluded for an infringement. As for Poss, he was in sublime form and kept his foot flat on the accelerator. But it was just enough to keep ahead. Because Krobler smoked the third fastest second loop of the day and was only 36 seconds behind. It was a real dogfight. Krobler held back nothing. The Sassol Nissans in a new livery with a blue trim were out in first and second. And Hans Krobler's SB Nissan Navara 4-litre growled along pretty rapidly, but couldn't gain on his teammates. With Pussa and Pardnost in a spirited performance in fourth. But no one could keep up with Woolridge and Schulthammer, who absolutely flat out clocked the fastest second lap by almost two minutes and were closing rapidly on the rest. The Micra and Excel dealer team of Hecho and Jaap de Brain were still going strongly, but they ran into trouble just after this and were excluded as well. The second works Toyota with Bevan Berthold at the helm and Robin Houghton calling were also forced to call it a day on the second loop due to mechanical troubles. But the Toyota flag was being flown by Fusser and Bardnost who had maintained a steady pace throughout. And Ford were hell bent on keeping the top ten blue and white. Kubis von Tonda and Rian Guelpe and their Unifreight Ford Ranger were doing just that in sixth place. With Weichelt and Gott joining that list of exclusions after getting it to the line. But the reliable team of the opening race, Lovis Kachny and Kharaba, soldiered off and were eventually the only Class D to reach the line and notch up an official finish. And in Class E, Fissa and Bardnost had just a one-second time difference for their two loops, showing their consistency in winning their category. But Arnie, make no mistake, it was close. Just three minutes and 49 seconds later, Rundle and Roberts steamed by, second in Class E. But the performance of the darling event came from the Femi jump Duncan Foss. Admittedly, it was a 36-second win, but he controlled things superbly and earned 25 valuable points for the victory. Woolridge and Schulthammer's valiant effort to stop and help at the accident scene probably cost them, but their second lap showed that the Ford would be competitive in 2008. The Eastern Cape 500 Round 2 of the 2008 Absa Off-Road Championship was a tough challenge. This route was totally different to any other the 60 drivers in the production car class and specials had faced before. A substantial part of the event, reduced from 1,000 kilometers to 500 because of fuel price hikes, was due to run in the Longmore Forest area in and around Port Elizabeth, making it treacherously fast at times. Grandier and Birkin were looking for their first big off-road win after last season's bad luck, where they were within sight of the finish line twice and wrecked it both times. They thought PE was a good opportunity, with force setting after them. Grandier and Birkin dominated the prologue and then set the pace from the off to take a firm hand of control on the Eastern Cape 500. And try as they might, force and stand-in co-driver young Louis Weichelt could make no early impression. 1,4. Mountaineer Tollefson and Evans were also right on top of things early on and were just two seconds off the pace. The Micker and XL dealer teams De Brains had started off in a big hurry and were up into fourth place. They shocked everyone with a continued good form. 
With the overcast conditions necessitating lights, Woolwich and Schulthammer were nicely ensconced in the top ten again and looking to apply some pressure. In the Castrol Toyota, Fissan Bardenos were up into sixth in the SP class and ready to perform some more overtaking maneuvers. With Koblan more working their magic after experiencing an electrical problem at the start, which cost them ten very long minutes. Now Cox in the motorite SP was next and desperately needed a finish after bombing out in the Western Cape. One driver relished this quick driving opportunity was Ford's Mark Ferguson and his good friend Craig West. They saddled up the big Ford Ranger bearing number SP21 in the production car class. The Barkaisons with their Ruicon Toyota Hilux had started having clutch pipe trouble but were still holding their own in their SP, belching flames. With the SP Ford Ranger 4 litre Fontonda and Gropper still 11th having gone neither up nor down after the first 100 odd caves. In the middle of the forest, Bertolt and Houghton had managed to flip their brand new Hilux. The Toyota lads were not too pleased with this latest misfortune. <laughs> With the men from Alberton, the Zermattens in their red Nissan Roby in the lead in Class D. Just ahead of these fellows, Cliff Weichelt and Jimmy Gock in their Toyota, but they were second by just 25 seconds. It was great racing in Class D. With Rundle and Roberts taking the Bowden Tires SP through its paces rather quickly, but they too rolled it at the worst possible time. Chris Deploy and Eng van Vieren were putting together a fine showing in Class D, running well in fourth place. While Class C protagonists Van Breda and Duplessis were working it steadily here towards the end of the first loop. While passing some of the stricken traffic on the roadside who were repairing a flat. And the interesting livery of the Poch Plastics Recycling E-Class was easy to spot, even though the skies were clouded over. But they were all chasing this pair, Cronier and Birken, and it was chasing in vain. The Rodeport man was in the lead to stay there. Woolridge and Schulthammer in the Ford, then put together an amazing mid-race surge and were up into the top three. With Tollefson and Evans after a slow start finding their rhythm and feel for the Longmore Forest Roads. Fusser and Bardenor sporting SP number nine had overcome a leaking crank seal. And then to top that, Yarpi was battling car sickness. Despite that, they were heading for 10th place. Robler, still seething after his electrical problems, was doing some low-level flying. Yep, yeah, and so was Cox, but he was out of the top five and battling to keep up. And to make those pesky little tight corners. But with their fly-by wire throttle controls, the Nissans weren't battling with that. Forces windscreen wipers had ceased to function and they were battling to see instead. With Gropa and Fantonda trying to squeeze every ounce out of the Unifreight Ford Ranger. The IDM cement entry was mixing it with the big boys. Yucca Swanepoel and Keith Solomon 11th in the SPs. moment for Mark Ronnie and Chris Duncan to savor. At the line at Kings Beach, their first win in the Apps Off-Road Series, a 10 minute and 48 second victory after a well-judged and well-controlled 500 Ks in and around Port Elizabeth. It was a big day for Toyota. And although they were second across the line after a race-long ding-dong battle, it was Ivan Tollefson and Quinn Evans in the Nissan Navarro took third in the production car battle behind the second-place Ford Racing Ranger pair of Woolridge and Schulthammer, who finished second fastest in the last loop. A fine victory and a full 25 championship points for the Toyota pairing, while Hrubler and Moore recovered well after their 10-minute wait at the start. But national champ Foss could only finish seventh. Foss and Pitchford and Woolridge and Schulthammer heading the top of the list but you counted Krobler out only at your own peril. The top 20 was rounded out by Rundle and Roberts with eight points in 11th and Van Breda and Duplessis with two points in 20th place. Our Rapsa Off-Road Championship review of the first half of the season continues.
And from ABSA, going off the beaten track to find solutions. The Nissan Sugarbelt 400 moved back to the outskirts of Peter Maritzburg, the capital of KwaZulu-Natal. Just outside the hustle of the city center lies Eston in the heart of the sugarcane fields. And it was here that round three of the 08 ABSA Off-Road Championship was scheduled to get underway. It's a race that is known for a great and testing layout which asks man and machine all the tough questions about technique as well as reliability all in one. Ford were racing in their own backyard as it were and were penciled in as one of the pre-race favorites. Cornier and Birkin again stole the show in the prologue and at the start of the day's 400 odd k's of racing it was time to saddle up and hit the road. And just a minute behind them allowing for dust gaps it was Foss and Pitchford who needed to get back to their winning ways. But Cronier and Birkin were looking for two wins on the trot and were soon into their stride again after their PE victory. But drama for them. They'd done one of their tyres a mishap and had to stop and change. While Krobler knew the pressure was on and the 51-year-old celebrating his 31st year in motorsport had to produce in a hurry. Uncharacteristically, he had no wins to show after two races. Under leaden and darkening sky, Schultheimer directed Woolridge around the early parts of the first loop, and the Ranger was sounding great, and the local knowledge wasn't hurting either. Ivar Tollefsen and his standing co-driver Francois Jordan came into their own halfway through the day and started whittling away at the lead. The Micker and XL dealer team Toyota of the DeBrains was up to the top five and making a real fist of it too. With Fusser and Bardnost in the second, Castrol Toyota hot on their wheels and pushing hard. The next SP car interview was that of Mark Ferguson and Craig West in the second Ford Ranger. And up ahead, that was Schrobler and Moore off the road. They had broken a lower ball joint after hitting a rock. In Class D, the super steady race, Sonic's output was still 19 seconds ahead of the competition after the first 10 Ks worth of racing. And in Class E, Jack Peckham and Lucio Santoro were setting the pace and still had almost five minutes over their nearest competitors. But there was no doubt about it, Foss and Pitchford were having a banner day and enjoying treating the fans to the spectacle of the Flying Navarra. <laughs> With the local lads, Woolridge and Schulthammer slotting into second after also going by Cronier and then the stricken Chrobler. Into the more mountainous terrain and here's where Ivar Tollefsen and his standing car Jordan definitely came into their own while Cronier and Birkin were holding on for dear life. And almost missed a vital road marking right there. Yeah, but fortunately spotted it in time. The Micker and Excel dealer team of the father and son, Yiko and Yop the Brain, were now flying and closing gaps on just about everyone up ahead. With Cox himself in a very uncompromising mood, working his way back in the motorite entry after having to repair a flat early on. Fusser and Bardnost were again very smooth and consistent and had an eye on a top five. While Ferguson and West were closing down a special in front of them, when the world took a nosedive. Track star Anthony Taylor had made the move to off-roading and he and Robin Houghton then rolled it themselves, not once, but twice. Still, they went on to record a finish on their maiden voyage. Ferguson and West in seventh place also got it back on its paws and steamed on towards the finish line at Esther. It had rained the night before and some parts of the route was rather slippery and mushy, but the race Sonic's team hardly noticed as they steamed on. With defending classy champions Peckham and Santoro, who had jumped a massive nine places overall and were just 66 seconds ahead in Class E. With Cliff Beichelt and Jimmy Goff all over the back of them trying to get closer to the lead in Class D. The Zermattens, meanwhile, wanted to help Jakob Swanepoel, but a bulky drive shaft would not allow them. <laughs> Fissa and Roo were running the roost in Class E, looking for their second win of the season. After the West Loop was completed, it was Foss and Pitchford enjoying a well-deserved four-minute gap. 
back was over. The hometown boys, Woolridge and Schulthammer, admitted to some tentative driving early on, but were now throwing caution to the wind in the Ford Ranger almost five minutes back. With Cronier and Birkin producing a great fight back after dropping down to fifth before their fuel pressure problem cured itself. And in fourth of Cox and to Steerhood also decided to just go hell for leather. The De Brains head into our viewfinder next, giving the Micker and XL dealer Team SP a full go on the Western Loop. And in the drier conditions, the Barkhazens, George and Sharon, were starting to come into their own and were flying along. Fusser and Bardenost were desperately trying to pick up a few places after a flat, and were indeed doing just that. Tollefson and Jordan were way down in 32nd overall after losing their wrestle with a tree and were trying to get back into the top 10. And Ferguson and West, who lost a windscreen, got some first-hand experience of what it would be like to take a special for a spin. Dust, dust, and more dust. Staying with forward, Fontonda and Gropper were quick in between the sugar cane. with their double rolls damaged clear to see. Anthony Taylor and Robin Houghton were nursing their Toyota back to the paddock, but still going quickly at the same time. They were in ninth. And in Class E, young Fisser and Yorks LaRue in their Hilux were just more than 10 minutes worth of breathing space. Over this crew, Jack Peckham and Lucia Santora and the Ford Ranger, who had slipped a few places on the run into the line. And in Class E, the third place was taken by jubilant Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer in the 4x4 Mega World entry. With Class D's Lois Kachny and Harba, who had no equals and were almost half an hour ahead of their nearest challengers. And they were Christian de Ploy and Henk von Fieren in the black and orange highlights. Hannes Grobler with Joan Moore kept plugging away to score some valuable and desperately needed championship points in the Nissan. But it was a truly superb drive from Duncan Foss and Ralph Pitchford at his usual pinpoint accurate self. A six minute victory for the Nissan Navarra crew and a second win in three races. The production car winner, a clear six minute win for the Nissan Perry. And that makes it two for the Japanese manufacturer. But there were four Toyotas in the top ten, giving them the manufacturer's award. Big victory gave Foss the lead in his championship defense by six points. It was all pointing towards a huge dogfight, with Woolridge and Konya and Hannes Hobler lurking back there as well. Round four of the Absa Offroad Championship, Gaborone Botswana. The desert in all its splendor. The Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race. It included a racing section for quads and bikes. Up ahead for the teams was a dusty, sandy 250k run to the first designated service point at Hatsa Lakladli, where there was a scheduled 15 minute decontrol, and then the ride home, which would skirt the central Kalahari game reserve. A second consecutive prologue win meant no dust for the De Brains in the Mikarin. And the Toyota led the procession of 59 cars from the start on day two. With Anthony Taylor, a national track champion, who was delighted with his third place off the line in the Castrol Toyota. And Christopher and Yaffi Bardnost in a similar Hilux third off the line in the SP class. The De Brains clearly meant business and were aggressive from the flag dropping. Castrol Toyota's Anthony Taylor applying all the pressure was flying after the opening caves. He had his hands full trying to hold off Fischer and Bardenost, who had to sort out an exhaust valve after the prologue, but had everything looking and sounding great afterwards. The Kalahari bush is dense and it's very penal, and the temperature was rising steadily too, but Foss and Weichert were laying down the law and going quickly. But the pace setters up front were still the Micker and XL dealer team of father and son Jaap and Hücher de Brain, who were doing some low-level flying. With Cox in the motorite SP recovering well after a puncture on the way to the first DSP after 140 Ks. But then, a surprise at the front. Fissa and Bardenost had taken the lead after the brains had had a coming together with some fauna and flora. And that 
gave the Toyota faithful lots to wave their flags about. But it left Nissan chasing. But in the desert, that's sometimes not a bad strategy. Force keeping his distance. With Taylor and Houghton, who were simply superb in only their second outing together in the Castle Toyota, the two-time Formula V national champ was slotting right in. And Cox trying to keep contact with the SPs in front of him. Woolridge and Schulthammer also did some giant killing and it snagged a bag full of places back after their puncture. While Cronier clearly had an altercation with matter made of some very solid nature. They had hit someone from behind and also had niggles with the clutch. But you need focus in this business and Nissan were coming at them. Crawler was also blasting up the batting order and overtaking left, right and centre. He clocked the fastest split for the first 500 Ks. Henry and Marisa Matten in the Ryobi Nissan hold the world record for the most consecutive finishes and they handsomely led Class D. And in the same class, Labaskakni and Kutsia hold on in the Raisonics Nissan for a hard-fought second, ten minutes ahead of third. To class E now, and Peckham and Santoro were driving like men possessed and set the pace with controlled aggression. But it was tough out there, though. Just less than 70% of the field saw the finish line of day two in one piece, a typically tough desert race in uncompromising conditions. They were led home by force. But the drive of the day, Mark Renier had raised the host's hopes with a superb showing on the second loop after DSP, and that left him in the lead by a scant 17 seconds from top to first. A brilliant run. Day two, and Cronier was away with all the pressure of leading the longest race on the Abs Off-Road Championship calendar. A tense final day lay ahead with 400 k's of racing to be negotiated. The Rudaport kitchen builder knew that he would have his work cut out for him. Force hit the road next. The defending national champion would rely heavily on his legendary fitness and stamina on the final day. He was looking for win number three of the season. Yeah, reigning national rally champion with Birkin had it going sideways in typical track style and started off like he had a flight to catch. And don't think that Woolridge and Schulthammer were not following the same flight path. The Ford has been getting quicker with each outing. Botswana was no exception. With the old warhorse Hannes Hobler back on the warpath, he lost 30 minutes on day one but was taking them back one by one. Taylor and Houghton followed next. Their highlights was looking and sounding great despite more than 600 k's worth of racing on the clock in the desert. Cox with former national champion Henny Kirsten had his side was quick, but according to Alfie, he wanted more speed from the Mertwright SP. With well, the Barghuisens going very quickly in the Bloemfontein-based Ruacon SP, they were up from 15th place and mowing down the opposition one by one. And in Class D, the front runners, the Zermattens, had extended their lead over the Race Sonics boys by a vital minute, which gave them some breathing space. But there was only leaving space for Fisser and Bartenhorst. After 800 k's, it had come to this. They had hit a tree and the Hilux couldn't be repaired. With a modified and lighter race, Sonics Nissan Hardbody in second in Class D. Now, however, they were 17 minutes down. But Toyota was still smiling broadly as classy leaders Yannifus and Jox Leroux came barging and bustling by. They had a 20-minute lead. With Jack Peckham and Lucio Santoro setting quick times in pursuit in their diesel Ford Ranger. But there was loads of pressure. Dierwald van Breda and Johan de Toy were closing down on them at a rate of knots. Up front, though, it was two-time winner Duncan Foss and his young navigator Louis Weichelt who were being hunted by a gaggle of very special production car-class racers. They could not afford to make a mistake. But there was still a small matter of the final 200 k's ahead. And Cronier and Birkin knew that they would have to bide their time, be patient and wait for the right moment. They let Foss through to see if he would falter. Woolridge has won here in Botswana three times, twice with Schulthammer, and their experience and the solid reliability of the Ford Ranger made them a solid bet to come through as well. A flying Krobler caught up five or six minutes, and the former national rally champ was putting together a great run. Meanwhile, Taylor was doing an unbelievable job in the second Toyota. The multiple track champion calmly slotted into the role of off-road racer with great ease. 
And with Houghton at his side, he could hardly miss. The Parkhuisens were producing their best drive of the season two, up eight places from where they started after the prologue. With the IDM Cement Boys, who are rock-solid seventh in the SB class. And Fontonda and Goffa going as hard as they could on the straights. Yeah, well, if the donkey would allow them that. Close. The brothers of Matten brought the Rovi Nissan home in ninth, easily winning Class D for the second consecutive year in the Kalahari Desert. And victory for the team Barber Spans Yonifus and Yoxlaru, 20 minutes ahead. After five second places here, it was finally a win for Yoni. Second in Class D, going to the Raisonics team of Kutsiala Vaskachny and Johan Gerber in their hard body, which had seen better days. And they were almost 10 minutes ahead of Chris Ploy and Henk Janssen von Furen in their RFS Toyota. And in Class E, a race-long battle was wrapped up when Diebold von Breda and Johan de Toy brought her home 20 minutes behind in second. With the early leaders, Peckham and Santoro, in the Ford, who had set the pace for more than 900 Ks, having to settle for third. Back in Gaborone, though, it was Duncan Foss and Louis Weichelt in a flying Sassel Nissan Navara. Third victory in four races, and this one over a thousand kilometers added another vital 25 points to an already impressive championship tally. Cronier and Birken flattered 60 k's out, and then to compound matters, lost the rear brakes, so they consolidated by just getting it to the finish line. A wise decision in the championship race. At the halfway mark of the 08 Absol for a championship log, Foss with a slender but vital 16-point lead, but the Ford Dio will be keeping an eye on Cronier and the other on Krobler. A third win of the season gives Fissa and LaRue the lead in the Class E battle ahead of Peckham and Santoro. Vehicle and asset finance from ABSA, overcoming all obstacles. It's your turn to get rocked and mauled. Pick your own dream team for the Vodacom.